So the next day then is the Ring of Kerry itself. Uh, so just a couple of things to note on the Ring of Kerry. Even though it's probably one of the biggest peninsulas, it's actually one of the quickest to get around uh, because the main road is, is quite big. Um, but there's a lot to see in it. Uh, now you'll notice that there's a section here because of this route, it, the way it is, it kind of ignores this section. But don't worry about that. Whilst this is a beautiful road to drive, uh, and it is part of the Wild Atlantic Way, the only reason I'm leaving it out is to opt for the much more nicer interior roads here. Uh, so even though you're missing this, which is you know, relatively nice, but it's not nearly as nice as what we're going to see along here. And we've still got the, the vast majority of what's considered the Wild Atlantic Way route in here. Um, but we'll go we'll go through it so so let's start digging in so we'll leave Clarny wherever you're staying uh, in Clarny itself or Kenmare or wherever you've stayed but you make your way out and the first point that we're going to hit is the Gap of Dunlow now the thing about the Gap of Dunlow is that uh, it was only they've only allowed motorized traffic down it in the last you know maybe decade or so before that it was just a dirt track and only the uh, the people who lived up there were, were able to drive up into it um, and it's mainly accessed by what are called Jarvies, uh, which are basically um, pony and traps. Uh, these uh, guys that will take you on a, on a tour through the Gap of Dunlow and down into the Black Valley. Um, and they're not mad keen on, on traffic. So if, if, you, if you get stuck behind a Jarvie or two, uh, it's very hard to get past them because the road is so narrow. Um, and they're not particularly keen to, to let you past. So what I tend to do is I get up very early the day I'm doing this route and I'll get up there by about 8 o'clock. And if you can get up there by about you know, 8 o'clock, you've basically got the entire Gap of Dunlow and the Black Valley to yourself and you won't be stuck behind the, uh, the, the Jarvis. Um, so, you know, if you're going to do it, you know, absolutely, you know, try and get up there as early as possible. Otherwise, it can get very, very busy and you know there's so many pedestrians on it cyclists uh, horse and carts and jarvies they really don't like motorized traffic going up through it so now you are allowed to drive it absolutely you're allowed to drive it so don't let anyone give out to you you know you'll often get uh, people giving you funny looks but it is a tarmac road it is a public road you're allowed to drive up it it's just frowned upon so get up there early so that you avoid as much of that as possible so you'll, you'll drive on up through the Gap of Dunlow. Let me just go to street level to show you what's in there if you've never done it before. Uh, let me zoom out a bit. It's not a great point. So that's just entering the Gap itself. Um, so you can see the road is quite narrow. It's not too bad, but it does get a bit tight and, and um, gravelly up near the top. You'll eventually go up through this valley up here. Um, but it's, it's a stunning drive, absolutely don't miss it. Uh, it's one of the most beautiful places in all of Ireland. Uh, I know these photographs here aren't doing it justice. Uh, from the Gap of Dunlow, uh, you'll drop down the back of it, uh, and that's along here into what's called the Black Valley. So all of this here is the Black Valley. But there's a, a lake down here, and it's called Loch Cumin Duff. Uh, now there's a dead end down here uh, so you'll have to come back out of it and again it this section here is a bit it's a bit tricky with the old gravel if you're on a if you're not on an adventure bike uh, but this is an absolutely stunning uh, lake to get down onto if you can you can see it it's a twin track uh, but it's beautiful uh, get get down here get some beautiful photographs some drone footage the only people generally down here are a few fishermen uh, it's well worth the effort to get down onto it uh, coming back out of Loch Cumin Duff, we'll continue into the Black Valley. Uh, the Black Valley itself is absolutely, it's a beautiful drive. It's, it's very atmospheric. Uh, and then you'll get down here to what's called point four. And this is right down on the valley floor itself. Now I put this in because the next section here, this piece of road here uh, brings us down over this beautiful lake. And it's a stunning, stunning road, but it is very, very precarious. And if the weather is any way uh, poor I would recommend not taking this road it's it's very narrow and sloppy and uh, there's a, a drop off in some sections of it that's covered with barbed wire so if you slip off you and your bike are going to fall <laughs> into a pile of barbed wire so at point four 
there's an alternative where you can take this road here and it'll drop you back up here to the t to just behind Mall's Gap and then you can continue down this road where it'll meet up to where you would normally come out if you continued on to point five and point five allows you to look out over this beautiful valley here I just go to street view so you can see it continues on down here and then heads out this way brings you out over this lake but there are just some very small sections here I, I don't think I'll find them here where it gets very very precarious uh, particularly if the weather is bad uh, but let's assume you've, you've taken this this route uh, what it does then is it drops you out here back onto the main uh, road right beside the entrance into the next point which is the Balabima Gap um, and what that will do is it will drop you back over towards some of the next points closer to the to the north uh, west coastline uh, now if you if you haven't gone to point five and you've come up at the back of Malls Gap make sure you watch for this turn off the turn off itself is very discreet it's very easily missed if I just click on street level here I'll show you what I mean so you can see that's the turn off and it's not very well signposted if you blinked you'd miss it you know and then it takes you off up into the to the Balabima pass um, so let's assume you've got the, the turn off you'll go up here into the Balabima Pass and as you can see with all the twists and turns on here this is an astonishing road uh, I think it's just as beautiful um, as the Gap of Dunlow not quite as big but it's absolutely astonishing don't miss the Balabima Pass and again none of the tour buses etc go up to it you know it's only a very few amount of people that find it uh, so you, you'll, you'll basically have the run of the place yourself you might meet one or two cars but other than that it's 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 astonishing and then after coming down the back part of the Balabima pass and you're coming out there's another uh, point that's well worth go, going down for again it's a dead end but it's Clune Lock uh, again another twin track road down to it if I go to Street View and just click on it here you can see it's twin track but there's the lock itself and again it's just well worth the effort to get down particularly if you're uh, into photography or, or drones uh, it's a really really beautiful little valley uh, with that beautiful lake in it so then you'll make your way out from Clune Lock and then we'll continue on up here uh, and then we're going to head for point nine and point nine is the Balahashin Pass and again this is a beautiful valley floor uh, the pass itself is here it's only quite a small pass but the valley itself going up to it as you can see it's just wide open and then surrounded by uh, ominous looking mountains and then you'll continue on up and there's the pass just there in the distance you'll go up and over it it's a beautiful drive and what that does then is it delivers you down here to uh, to near the next point which is Cahir Savine <coughs> now before we head out from Cahir Savine we're going to go over to this little jutty out peninsula here and there's a couple of things to note out here <clears throat> if you've never been here before uh, there's two uh, stone forts here one is called Cahargal stone fort and the other one is called Lechna Bulia sorry I can't pronounce that I, I know I should be able to speak Irish but I can't uh, but these are absolutely stunning like they're they're somewhere in the region of uh, 12 to 1500 years old they're, they're ancient ancient uh, sites and are very very beautiful uh, well worth the the effort to get out to it and then if you have time there's a there's a castle out here as well I'm not doing it on this trip uh, but definitely take it only takes from Cahir Savine out to these it's a five minute drive it's well worth the effort to get out to it uh, from the two stone forts we make our way back into Cahir Savine and then we're going to head for one of what I feel is one of the highlights of the whole Ring of Kerry uh, a lot of the uh, the the um, touring guides overlook it but it's by far one of the best points of the whole Ring of Kerry and that's this island here and this is Valencia Island it's absolutely stunning uh, now during high season you can get a little car ferry it's just take it from here over it's a five minute crossing uh, it's only a few euros to get over you just drive up and, and get on and then there's a bridge down here that takes you off it uh, so if the ferry isn't running for any reason you can follow the road out and go over and then take the lower road out to Knightstown and then take the higher road back out then towards Port McGee 
uh, but, but most people would be there when the ferry is running so take the ferry over it's a beautiful little crossing and that will drop you into Knightstown. Valencia is a very famous uh, little town that a lot of people or little island that a lot, a lot of people don't realize why. Uh, down here is the Cable Masters building uh, and the Cable Masters building is an old office building uh, because at some one point back in I think it was 1858 or somewhere like that I, I can't remember the exact date I'll, I'll put a link into it here from this point here over to Newfoundland uh, there used to be or still is actually a cable if I zoom out here I'll go here so this island here Newfoundland a cable was ran from Valencia Island all the way over here to uh, uh, a little island and it was a, I think it was called uh, Heartland or something like that um, but it's a it's it's an amazing story uh, uh, Hearts Content that's the name of the place Hearts Content in Newfoundland but the cable was ran uh, and it was the first uh, it, uh, transatlantic cable that was allowed that, that allowed um, telecommunications between uh, North America and Europe and the, lab the, the cable was run, run from Valencia Island here in Ireland over to Newfoundland. It took them months and months of ships sailing across, dropping the cable into the ocean uh, to make the way across. And it, it made Valencia Island one of the most important places in the world at the time because it basically opened up uh, telecommunications between the two continents, which meant that your messages, instead of taking weeks to come by ship, could now be transferred over in minutes. Uh, so it was a total game changer for, for the era uh, and I believe the cable was came into a tiny little hut just around this point here I've been trying to find it every time I go down uh, I've never been able to find it but I, I've, I've got some information uh, from the last time I was down that, that's allowing me to where I think I can find it now but the, the, the offices are up here so well worth going in to, to, to have a look at them if you're in any way interested in history and then after the offices you continue out and you follow this road up and taking the high road up over the, the, the island itself. Now there's three key points to go and see here. The first of which is Valencia Island Lighthouse. It's a beautiful lighthouse just here. Uh, and then up here, there's a couple of points here. There's the Valencia Island Weather Station, which is an interesting little spot itself. Uh, but just down from Valencia Island, uh, there's, there's a five minute walk down to the shoreline and in the rocks on the shoreline you'll find uh, the tetrapod footprints and the tetrapod footprints were made by one of the first animals to leave the ocean to form mammals so they were basically you know the the the, the precursor to, to mammals and eventually to uh, to, to humans uh, and their footprints are still there to this day in the stone uh, over 350 to nearly 370 million years uh, old um, well worth the, 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 the walk down to see them Ireland I believe was somewhere down near where Brazil is now on the equator and with tectonic movement we've now moved up much closer to the North Pole uh, but the footprints are still there uh, well worth a, a, a trip down to, to see them and then from then up you can come back up and then you continue on up here and then you get to Valencia Slate Mine uh, and this is a very interesting little spot and it has some of the best views of the entire island on it so if I can just go to street level here uh, you can see there's the entrance to the Slate Mine uh, and over here uh, there's a great viewing point that looks back over the entire island uh, so down there is the lighthouse uh, just below it will be the tetrapod uh, footprints uh, and then in here itself uh, as you can see then is the entrance to the mine and it's very interesting you can walk right into the mine itself into the entrance here for some strange reason they've put an altar uh, for uh, church and mass services uh, at the entrance to the to the mine uh, but it's a very interesting little spot to go and see uh, so don't miss it so then coming out of the slate mine you'll continue on out and then you'll go over what's called the upper road so this is a high road right over the top of the uh, the island itself if you want you can stop and go and see uh, Geocon mountain uh, or then continue on down here to this beautiful viewing point um, on, on what's called Bray Head uh, there's a little car park there you can stop and the beauty about Bray Head is 
it gives uh, one of the best views out to Skellig Michael and you can see there in the different di distance that's Skellig Michael that's the little Skelligs there uh, and this is good opportunity as any uh, if <clears throat> if you're a Star Wars fan fan you might have seen Skellig Michael it's where uh, Luke Skywalker was hiding out in the new Star Wars movies that's the island there that's in the movie and um, it's a bird sanctuary it's a UNESCO uh, World Heritage Site and uh, if you get the opportunity to go over to this island absolutely take it it's very hard to get over there's they they limit the amount of people that can visit it per day you have to book the tickets months in advance uh it's about 100 euros to get a landing party on it you can get other boat trips that will just drive or circle around it it's absolutely stunning but if you can get onto the island get onto the island it's well worth it uh, and if you can do the boat trip to take in little skelligs as well do the little skelligs because it's a huge it's one of the largest bird sanctuaries on the planet it's absolutely amazing to go and see uh, and the boat leaves from Port McGee which is just over here so if you're going to go see it stay in the beautiful little hotel in Port McGee and then you literally only have to walk out the door and you're onto the boat and it takes you over you take it's about a 40 minute sailing to the island and uh, you, you need to be well dressed for it and uh, fit but it's well worth the uh, the trip over So leaving the Bray Head Point, you'll follow the road out and you'll drop down uh, and you'll cross the bridge over to Port McGee. Um, so once you come down off the bridge into Port McGee, uh, just a point of reference, there is a, a, a toilet there if you need a toilet break because they are in short supply out this way. Uh, and then as I mentioned, the hotel that if you should stay in if you're going to... Uh, to the uh, Skellig Michael trip is the Moorings Hotel. It's a, it's a cracking little hotel right there in Port McGee. And they'll even run some of the boat trips out to the islands itself. Uh, so you can arrange your accommodation and the boat trip from there with them. Uh, but then leaving Port McGee will follow the coast road out. Uh, there's a little uh, point here that I have yet to go and see myself. I've driven past it a hundred times. I've never gone down it. So this time I'm going to go down by Faha Pier. Uh, just click on it here so you can see what it is. Let me just turn this around. So as you can see, a beautiful little pier at the end of this little uh, inlet. Uh, I just want to go down and get some photographs of it. From Faha Pier, we'll come out then and we head down here, uh, past waypoint 21, and that's going to bring us down further along the coast down here and we're heading now for point 22 which is the Caleric Artist uh, Retreat Village so a beautiful little road that takes you up here again it's a dead end uh, but Caleric Artist Village is, it's a set of these old cottages that were abandoned during the Irish potato famine uh, they've been restored uh, and various artists go in uh, and they do various jobs on them to, to update them and keep them fresh um, but they're just beautiful little uh, place to go and see and it's well worth it just for the view alone as you can see you can have a great view out over uh, the, the rest of the peninsula uh, as I said it's it's a dead end so you can only go up so far so I wouldn't go any further than uh, this point here at the, uh, the artist village uh, because it's very tight then to turn around later on if you go further up uh, coming back down off the Caleric Artist Village, we'll head out here to point number three, which just brings us onto the coast road. That will bring us out along here uh, until we come back around, and then we're going to go down here uh, out to what's called Loch Curran. Again, this is a dead end, as you can see, it terminates here and here. There's no real need to go any further than here. Uh, this is just a point that I found on it last year. Uh, but again it's a place that's worth going out as you can see beautiful twin track and it brings you right around uh, this beautiful lock uh, lock curran and um, great places to get some beautiful photographs and uh, views it's just stunning you know really good place to go exploring uh, you'll come back in off lock curran and then continue on out and then you'll hit point uh, number 27 and point number 27 is Kumakista uh, viewpoint and from Kumakista viewpoint 
uh, there's some stunning views out over uh, the bay so you can see here particularly when the sun is shining it's absolutely stunning uh, there's the car park itself that's Kumakista viewpoint uh, and then you look down over here really really beautiful not on that day obviously <laughs> And then from Kumakista, you're going to head down, you're going to continue on along the main road. Uh, and this is a crack and drive. This, you can get some nice speed up here for you sports bike lads. Uh, really beautiful views as you go down through by Cahar Daniel. And then when you get to here, you can go out to point 28, which is Lamb's Head, which is one of the signature points uh, for the Wild Atlantic Way. Again, I'll go down to street level just to show you what to expect. You get out to Lamb's Head here. And it's just a, it's just a beautiful uh, peninsula to go out and see, you know. From Lamb's Head, then we're going to come back in, continue on along the route, and then we're going to go up to see point number twenty nine. And again, this is another historical point. This is Steig Fort. Again, I think it's somewhere in the region of you know twelve to fifteen hundred years old. It's an ancient old fort. You'll stop here, you have to pay, there's a little box you can put it like a, a couple of 50 cent or a euro in it. That's the fort up there. Let's see if I can get a better picture of it. But it's an old ring fort. You can come through the entrance and it's just an old uh, fort that, uh, that's ancient. Uh, and that's what is great about Ireland, all these old ancient uh, buildings and historical sites. Again, that's a dead end, so we'll come back down. It only takes five, 10 minutes to get up to these things. And then we'll continue on out along the coast road, along the wild Atlantic way, uh, until you get the Sneem. Don't take the N70 here. You wanna take this uh, or 568 and continue on up. And as you can see, we're starting to double back on ourselves now. So there's the turn off we took to Balabima. Uh, but if we keep on this road, it'll bring us up to here. There's a beautiful little shop here that I've been meaning to get to that uh, apparently does some of the best pancakes in the world. Uh, let's see if I can get it. So apparently this place here does the best pancakes in Ireland. Might be worth a stop. Uh, and then you continue on and then you'll drop into uh, to Mall's Gap. And so now we're effectively double backing onto where we would have come into Clarny on the previous day. So we'll go down by Mall's Gap down through ladies view again you won't mind doing this road a second time it's absolutely fantastic and that will bring you back into Clarny finishing out the day so that would be that would be a good day uh, if you've got all of this done you'll be you'll be happy with your day uh, but that takes in all of the main points on the ring of Kerry I'm sure there's something that I've missed that uh, that uh, other people may have done but to me I think that's the most optimum route for the entire ring of Kerry. So with that then we'll move into the next day and on to Dingle.